Hi, uh, in this lecture, we're going to cover current meters. So this is an introduction lecture for current meters. Uh, current meters are the very fundamental component for biasing or providing a current source for your open. Just starting from this, probably from this lecture, we are going to study every part of the open you are going to lay out in the lab. Uh, so I understand what are they and why do we put that into the open to make it work. Okay. Introduction to Introduction to the current mirrors. Let's draw the big picture first. So no, why do we use current meters and where are they? You know, uh, remember the differential pair we learned previously. So there's a drain to dial, a drain to source, com gate to drain connected uh, PMOS, and on the other side there's another one. So keep in mind, uh, over here we didn't we didn't ground the gate. Instead, we shore the two gates together. Uh, the reason is the uh, in internal resistance of this channel will be a lot higher than the trap connection uh, resistance. Anyway, uh, let's just draw the differential power first and we are going to explain all the parts later on. So there are two inputs going to the gates and that's a VDD. And remember we had a current source. It used to be a current source over here. So you can imagine that you can never integrate the current source equipment into the chip, right? So you may have to, you must uh, design something which can draw current from the VDD, from the uh, power source, and allow the current flow through these two channels and merges as it's joined and go back to the ground. So that's a critical, critical part. Uh, it's providing a DC bias of so the current source of, uh, of all these transistors in the differential power. So let's call it uh, I. So I provides the DC bias. So which means which point, which DC operating point uh, are these transistors are being set to. Okay, so it's they are being set by this uh, DC by this current source. So I provide the DC bias point, bias current for the differential power. Okay. I know this sounds like uh, not making sense for now, but we are going to explain this later uh, when when we uh, do all these calculations, you will know why we do that, okay? But at least right now, you know, you need a DC voltage. Yeah, you need a DC current uh, to run through all the channels to create a proper rate VGS for all these animals. Okay, but in the real life, we cannot have a current source in the DC power. So what we have to do is something else to provide a current source. So the current meters, current meters will provide <clears throat> the current source for the, for the differential pipe. If we draw it um, again here, okay, so that's uh, load. So I mean this part on the top, so that's a load. And we'll, we'll explain that later as well. So in real life, the current source is actually a transistor, a most transistor. Okay, we can use a different color. Probably that's more helpful. So that's the current source. How uh, how much current is this almost drawing from the VED? You have to design a circuit to control that. Okay, so you need another circuit here. It's a gate drain connected. Almost with a resistor on the top to bias this almost and in order to draw a current over there. 
So you're asking, how do you know what is the current over here? Right? Since you have a, a NMOS gate to drain connected NMOS and the resistor connected to BDD, so this part is under control. So you can design a current called RF. Okay, so IRF is the reference current. So you can design the RF in the in, in the first channel, and that RF REF will bias this almost to a certain point and create a VGS. So you know what the equation VGS equals to what? 2 times RF over beta n plus VTHN. Remember this equation? We derived it from the square law equation. So based on this, VGS will be create, created. So which is over here? Which is voltage over here? So creating the VGS by the REF, IREF, and you can create the VGS over here as well because it's being shorted to over from here. And you can control the current flow through this channel. Okay, so this part, this part is the current mirror. All right. So this is very important. Now we're going to introduce multiple, uh, several different topologies of the current mirrors and uh, also the applications associated uh, with these different topologies. Uh, and you can find this book, either a hard copy or electronically, uh, and the chapter 20 covers all this current stuff. And I highly recommend you uh, read through all this stuff in this textbook and also the layout considerations. And I'm going to cover this. So we will cover enough contents for uh, for this course, this master, but the thing is, you might wa might be wondering where are they from, right? So where are these layout examples um, from? So you can definitely find all these layout uh, examples from this book. Um, yeah, if you don't read this, it's, it can be pretty tricky. You know, it's hard to understand. All right. Uh, so now let's continue working on uh, all these examples for current mirrors. So now we know that current mirror looks like this. Okay. So I'm gonna draw, use another paper to, to just separate uh, current mirror from the uh, differential pyre. Okay. <clears throat> the first topology, and I will draw a VDD, a resistor, <clears throat> an NMOS, and do this, guarantee is being saturated and do this, do this, VDD, VDD, okay? And R1 is actually called R, mm, R ref, and this is RL. So why is RL, okay? It's M1, it's M2. So remember that in the previous page, that's a current mirror, and everything on the top is a load. So now we are not using a differential pair as a load. Instead, we are using a resistor as a load just to represent anything can be used as a load for the current mirror. It's just drawing a current uh, from the source and the current is gonna drive this resistive load. And you're asking why this guy is not a load? Because it's not being used as a load. This is a reference, load, reference uh, resistor. The reason is we need to create uh, R -E -I -R -E -F, a reference current on the left, which is the origin, origin, original channel first, this branch, create the IRF first, and that current will be mirrored to this channel. It's called IO, so that's the output current. So how this can be mirrored to over here? Um, because of VGS. 
Okay. So there might be a, a equation to uh, let you calculate uh, what is the RF, R, R ref should be designed to create our uh, I ref at the first branch and generate a specific VGS to control the output branch to create IO. So now let's look at this part first. <clears throat> and we know that, so given, Given that, uh, to to create an IREF equals to, for example, twenty microamps. Okay, and mirror the current to IO. So what is our ref? And the ratio over here is 10 to 2, 10 to 2, width to length ratio. And this is a 1N1U device. So which means KPN equals to 120 microamps per voltage square. Can you calculate that? Can you calculate RF? So that voltage over here is VGS because it's being shorted to the gate voltage over here. And this is there's nothing at the source, which is directly ground. So V the gate voltage here equals to VGS. And since we know the current has to be R ref, which is 20 microamps, and we don't know R ref, we're going to calculate R ref. So VDD is five volts, for example. So we can make the first equation, which is VGS equals to VDD minus I ref times R ref. Is a voltage drop across RF. So VDD minus I times R equals to VGS. And the second equation, which is from the which comes from the N modes, so VTHN equals to 0 0.8 volts, right? That's from the model file. So I have two equations and how many variables? One, two. Definitely can calculate that. So combine them and plug in this one, this one, this one, all these ones into the equations. And you are gonna get five minus 20 microamps times R ref uh, equals to Two times twenty micro over beta. What is beta? So beta n equals to one hundred twenty micro times ten over two, which is six hundred micro, right? Plus zero point eight volts. No, I directly write this. Uh, oh yeah, this is right. What's next? Um, it's pretty straightforward now because uh, I can directly just do this, right? So 5 minus 20 micro R ref equals to, what is this? Let's get the here really quick. I think we have been using this for many times. I probably should remember this value. 40 over 600. And square root, so 0 0.26 plus this guy equals to 1.0.2606. So our ref 
equals to 4.94 over 20 micro, which is yeah, do this again. 4.9. Is that 4.94? No, 3.94. 3.94. Three point nine four divided by twenty, which is this much. Uh, so it's one hundred ninety seven k ohms. Okay, I hope this is right. Um, so this will give you twenty microamps for for these branches. Uh, I think we can verify this really quick. And see if that is true, and then we can move forward with other. Yeah, let's don't simulate this one since we have more circuits to to talk about. So now let's move to another one, the second one probably. Since we can see that that's a uh, um, almost a car mirror, and you know we can generalize this structure into something like this. Okay, doesn't matter what is the load. As long as you tell me what kind of REF you need, I can find out a uh, reference resistor over here to create a specific VGS, which can create that I.O. Okay, so what about, can you extend this to more? The answer is definitely yes, you can. If this one equals to 20 microamps and this is 10 to 2, okay, and I need, I need IL1 equals to 20 microamps, IL2 equals to 40 microamps. And L3 equals to 80 microamps. And how that works. Okay. Because VGS are equal. So all these VGS are equal. All right. So which means I equals to beta. Uh, N over 2 and VGS minus VTHN. And this one is KPN over 2. All right. So if you need twice as much as IREF, which, which parameter you can, you can adjust over here in the equation? Because if all the VGS are equal, so we cannot change too much over here for VGS, right? And KPN is depend on the fabrication process and it's already defined uh, in the factory. It cannot change it at all. So the only thing it can change is the ratio over here, right? So do we want to change W or L? Which one I want to change? So usually we just change one because this is a ratio. If you do two, two, it's not changing the ratio at all, right? So just change one of them and we usually change W instead of L. Why is that? Keep in mind, we want to keep the channel length as small as possible, really. Uh, you know, always we keep it to the uh, to the smallest size of the technology to try to integrate as many uh, transistors as we can into the circuits. So this is really 
being kept in the uh, smallest value. So you can, that's why you always see two here. We can change this one to 20, 30, 50, but we always keep this one to be two because in C5 technology, um, <clears throat> in electric VOSI, This one, which is the scale, equals to what? Let's do, remember that. It equals to 300 nanometers. So 2 times 300 nanometers equals to 600 nanometers. So the smallest size, actually, in your VISI, in your layout, chip layout in the lab, is actually 600 nanometers, but not 500 nanometers, even though C5 is a 500 nanometer technology. But when you are doing the design, you don't want to just always using the smallest size the technology can, can uh, achieve. Uh, this is risky because maybe you lower your, uh, the yield of the uh, chip fabrication. Uh, a lot of chips probably is not functioning properly. So we just make it safe, safer. We are using two times lambda. Right? So two times 300 nanometers will be 600 nanometers. Um, and we just keep it using two times lambda all the time. But over here in your uh, LT spy simulation, it's a one U technology, which is just based on the theory. It's not a, it's, it's not fabricatable at all. It's just one micro technology in the simulation. Okay, it's not, it's not any of the fabrication uh, model files. It's just for simulation. Uh, but you know, we just trying to be used to using two at the smallest size over here. So that's why you are always seeing two uh, as a lens. So the way to change the, the parameter to change is W, right? Which is a width. Um, over here, if you want to keep this one to be 20 microamps, okay, you should keep the same ratio or a different ratio compared to your original channel. Apparently they are the same current. The same current, you should keep the same ratio of W over L. And we are not changing L at all, so you need the same W over L. Okay, what about here? You need the two W over L. What about here? You need four W over L. And you can easily, not just mirroring the current, but also increasing the current by a specific scale. So that's for NMOS. Definitely, you can create current meters in PMOS devices as well. <clears throat> and the load has to be connected to the green. Looks like this. <clears throat> so that's I O, that's I R E F, that's R R F, and that's B D D, that's B D D. So for example, we are trying to create IREF equals to 20 microamps as well. And KPP equals to um, 40 microamps per voltage square from the model file. And uh, VTHP equals to 0 0.9 volts and anything else. And they are 30 over two 30 over 2. See, it's still 2 over here. It's a minimum, uh, minimum lens of the transistors. So now, the question is, what is RRF? Okay, now let's calculate this. VDD minus VSG. Mm, so that's V... Uh, v G, actually, it's not VSG because VSG is VDD minus VS, uh, VG. 
and VDD equals to five volts. So call this again equal to five volts. <clears throat> so we can find out that VG equals to what? Voltage here, voltage here equals to I R E F times R F times R F and also V G equals to V D D minus V S G and also I R E F equals to V S G uh no beta P VSG minus VTHP squared. So we've got three equations. And how many variables? One, two, three. Only three equations and three variables. So we can plug in this to calculate uh, VSG and uh, REF. So REF is 20 microamps. So it's going to be 20 micrograms times our ref, which is VG, equals to this. Uh, so this is 5 minus VSG. And VSG is over here. If we uh, use this one, use this part to substitute VSG, and we know REF is 20 micrograms, we can calculate uh, REF. 20 microamps equals to beta p. So what is beta p? Let's calculate beta, beta p first. Beta p is 40 microamps per voltage square over, I keep doing that, times 30 over 2. And this is 15 times 40, it's so still 600 micro. <clears throat> so beta P is this, and 20 microamps here, just plug in, and we're getting, yeah, well, actually we are making this a bit more, we can directly use a VSG equals to blah, 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 that equation, but even it's over here is just fine. So now let's find out, 20 microamps equals to uh, 300 micro, right? This over 2, which will be this, and VSG minus VTHP, and uh, remember we have, oh, so VSG equals to what? Did we make any mistakes? 20 microamps equals to this over this. Uh, oh, no, we didn't plug in there, but we just directly use that. Okay, never mind. So VSG equals to 1 over 1 over um, 15 plus 0 0.8. Which is what, what is 1 over 15? 40 over 600. 1 over, I think it's the same number, is it? Yeah, 0 0.26. It's still 1.06 volts. I think probably that's a purpose to design all these numbers to make KPP. Uh, three times less than KPN. So I get a VSG and plug into here, you can get R ref. So R ref equals to, I think it's the same value, uh, 3.94 volts over 20 microamps equals to, I'll just use the purpose value. I just got from the almost one. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's 197 kilo ohms. So we need that resistor to create a 20 amps, 20 microamps current in here and here. Same concept.
the same concept if you want to cut if you want to add more branches after the pinholes. So same concept and add a lot of trilling pinholes and scale them to create a different values of currents over there. Uh, so that's a load. I just didn't do the load. Okay. Same concept. And so that's I R E F. And if you want to I O one, which is current over here, equals to two I R E F. So if this is W over L, you need a two W over L, right? If you need I O two equals to four I R E F, and you need a four W over L, so on and so forth. So that's L two and L three. Um, equals to eight I R E F. Yeah, we just didn't do the law, but you can imagine that you the, the circuit, the current meter is drawing current from the voltage source. The purpose is to drive the load, right? So there there will be a some sort of load being connected to the drain of the PMOS, and uh, we draw it like this, just trying to make it convenient. We didn't draw the body at all. So keep in mind, this is not the body. Not the bulk, not the body contact. So you don't want to connect this one to here, right? So this is just, I want to make it convenient. I directly draw the gate connection through all these PMOs. But it's not actually <laughs> working uh, in the way you see here. Okay? It's not the when you, you know, despite you can see a, a force pin over here, which is a body connect. Here is not, here's a gate. Do not do it like this. You know, you want to probably do it in, a, in the other way. Um, decor a little bit over here. Okay, do not do it in, in, in this way. Okay, I think I have a few more examples. All right. So in layout, in your layout, it's pretty interesting. If you have a current mirror, it looks like this. So they are all connected together. All right, so in chip layout, is there a way to optimize the layout of these two transistors? All right, so this is NMOS. It's not a PMOS, it's NMOS, 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 two NMOS. So for one transistor, one NMOS, because it's a 10 over 2, so you can imagine that it's a pretty fat device, but not really long. So if you draw it in LT Spice, not LT Spice, in uh, Electric VOSI, it may look like this. And that's the gate. And these are the contacts for the N plus. So that's one transistor. So you let, let me know what's the width and what's the length of this transistor. So that's the top bill, right? It's a top view, but we are looking from the top. And this dimension is a lens. And that's a width. So that's why the width is larger than the lens. So the current is going to flow in that way. Okay, if you apply voltages to these transistors, so you can imagine that actually this terminal is the same as the terminal here. And that's the channel, and that's the uh, ground. And you have another one, 
and they are shorting their gates and train together on the other side. So it's something like this. One and two, and they are being placed together. <clears throat> it's frozen again. Just make it faster. So these are the contacts, metal contacts, from the uh, metal layer to the N plus area of the N modes. Right? So they should be placed one by one, by, uh, one beside each other in the layout because these two are shorted at the gate. And also, you need a metal wire to short the drain and the source as well. Why is that? And the gate. So the three terminals are being shorted together. You can see that the, the source are being grounded together, the drain are connected, the gate, gates are connected, and even the gate to drain, there's a connection here. That looks like they're all connected to each other. Okay, so the way to lay this out is actually not draw these two devices and connect them together like this. So the way to do that is to directly just draw one, just draw one device. <clears throat> and what's the dimension of that device? And they are equivalent. What's the dimension of this device to make it equivalent to these two? Of course, you are doubling the width, and but you didn't change the length at all. So here should be two W over L, okay, to make it equivalent to this one. So that's what you want to do in the layout. <clears throat> and here's here's another thing we need to know before we quit. So for simulation, <clears throat> for these two circuits, for this car mirror, I, R, E, F, <clears throat> or what if we just use the current source? If you do a simulation, is there any differences between these two topologies? So the answer is, for this simulation, if you do a DC sweep for VDD, so when we are doing the calculations, there's nothing about VDD, right? We are using five volts, but you are changing to 10 volts. Theoretically, it shouldn't change anything except for the um, current value, we can still reach REF, and also RF and RO, they should be equal. So theoretically, this should be this, right? Um, so that's I. Theoretically, L, IREF. However, it's not happening that way. So the way it happens is IO is going to some be something like that, and REF will be something like this. So it's changing when you are sweeping your VDD. The reason it's changing is because when you are changing your VDD, when increasing ID slightly increases. Because remember the IV curve, VDS versus IDS for the endmost transistor, it's not perfectly flat. 
it's something like this. So there will be a little slope. So it's not perfect. That's why you will see something like this. Okay. So if you, you if you're using a <coughs> current source over here, the situation will be a little bit better. Okay. Um, it won't change that much because IREF already is a current source. It's already a uh, fixed the current to a specific value when you are changing uh, your VDD. It forces the current flow through the channel to be R R E F I R E R R E F, so the curve will be a slightly different. It will be something like this. I O I R E F. You're asking, hey, our I O is still different from I R E F. Why is that? It's still, it happens the same thing over here. Why this happens? Why I O is always larger than I R E F. Let's write in case. Write in case. Why is always larger than I R E F. What's the difference? Why is that? So for example, over here. So which one has the larger v, v, VSD? Which one has a larger VSD? So this one has an entire VD voltage drop across VS and VD. So VSD equals to five volts. For here, it's definitely less than five volts. So the VSD over here at the output is larger than the VSD of the original, original channel. So that's why Based on this curve, that's why your I/O will be larger than I ref always. Same, but for this one, it happened the same way because this one will definitely have a little voltage drop over here. Uh, it forces the current to be the same, but uh, because of the VSD difference of the VSD, and your I/O will be slightly larger than. I ref as well. Keep in mind, this is important. So now let's do a really simple simulation. And <clears throat> maybe it's helpful for your homework when you are doing the homework. PMOS is a circuit. Um, so this is how you lay it out. Don't forget to flip your PMOS and uh, mirror it by doing this, right? So this one, so you can uh, change your gate to the other side. And um, I think what we found out is 192 or 97. Look for some values on the calculation to make it 20 micrograms, 197 ohms right uh kilo ohms and now let's see if we can get 20 microamps flow through the channel right um let's run it it's dot op operation so we are look you should look at is yeah it's pretty close 20 microamps and for the other is See, I/O is slightly larger than I ref, okay? But they are both close to your. Uh, they are both close to the uh, twenty microamps uh, reference voltage, reference current. And if we sweep VDD, and we'll see what's going to happen. So I'm going to do a DC sweep. I will comment out this operation and control enter so i can type in the new one i'm going to do a dc sweep of vdd from uh, from where from uh, 0 to 10 volts for example and 0 
one volts per point. And now let's see what's going to happen for this case. Run. And I will probe this current and this current. So you can tell that ISM2 will be slightly larger than your uh, ISM1. I think I shouldn't do I shouldn't do zero. I should at least turn it on, right? So I should do five probably. Let's do five. All right. So now I can see that um, it's always larger than than that, and also this is something you cannot control because it's changing when you are uh, when you are changing your changing your uh, VDD. The current is changing as well. But if we change this resistor to a current source and now let's see i expect it's going to be more flat it's going to be a flat curve let's put it here 20 micrograms yeah mm, this one is not changing because it's a uh, uh current source is a fixed value, but this one is changing slightly, very tiny amount of change. Uh, it's because the VSD is changing, so uh, the current will change a little bit. But anyway, so this is how to demonstrate the current source over here. Uh, I think it's a pretty fundamental introduction. You should be able to do the homework after this. And uh, I have an NMOS version as well. I don't, I don't think I need to run that. For you guys because it's the same concept just do a connection and change the resistor value and uh, find out the correct current from that all right we'll see you in the next video